When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, as always, Colleen Biggs. We have a really special, uh, fun episode today, I'm going to say, because there's this number one fright and fear that every single person has admitted to having. And this is crazy because when we're born, we're born with two... Uh, fears. And it's the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Many people don't know that, but I had done a little research and as babies. So when babies hear loud, loud noises, believe it or not, they freak out and then um, the fear of falling. So that's why we all freak out, you know, and, and our jump and our blood pressure goes up when, when we fall. <clears throat> so I have Christy Love here today and her and I are going to dive into the fear and stage fright of being a public speaker and being in front of other people. So she wrote a book called From Stage Fright to Superstar. And we're going to get into why is that a fear of humans? How do we overcome that? What is the training that is available to us? And what are some things you can do for yourself today to combat that fear. But before we get to Christy, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's show, Paige Morlino Real Estate. Choose excellence in real estate with Paige Morlino, a seasoned seven-year AZ realtor at Limitless Real Estate. Grounded in core values of honesty, transparent communication, meticulous detail, and unwavering commitment, she brings true value to every home journey. As a full-time and full-service agent with a vast network, Page leverages diverse avenues and masterful marketing, ensuring each property and client receives the attention they deserve for a successful and rewarding real estate experience. Elevate your real estate venture with Page today. Instantly check your home's estimated value with the link that we have below in your notes of your podcast. So make sure you click on that no matter where you are in the valley. You do not have to be in Arizona. No matter where you are listening to this, you can click on that and actually get your home's value. How awesome is that? So um, make sure you do that. And thank you again to uh, Limitless Realty. Now, Christy Love is the owner of Be Seen, Be Loved. Um, I love that because my tag is be you, be strong, and hers is be seen and be loved. And I work everything about visibility. And so does Christy. So this is going to be an amazing show. And um, she is also the owner of Affecting Effective Training Solutions. She's an expert in the communication and connection industry. She's an award-winning international public speaker, communication coach, best-selling published author, podcast host, and TV show, show host on Win Win Women, which is a global women's advancement network. Christy is a leader in her own right with over 20 years a public speaking experience. She aims to support entrepreneurs to gain more visibility, credibility, and conversation, or I'm sorry, conversion by confidently leveraging and mastering the power of public speaking. By the way, this goes for every single one of you. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You can be in corporate America and have a fear of being on stage, but that is what you need to do for your job. So Christy, this is for everyone. And Christy Love, welcome to the show. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Colleen. <laughs> Happy to be here. And thank you for that introduction. But yes, yeah. speaking is so important and everyone has to do it, but a lot of people are fearful of it. For yeah. Sure. Why do you think, tell me why you think that is? What is the number one reason you've heard from your clients or those that, you know, the thousands of people or millions of people that you've trained? What is the number one thing? Why they're fearful? Well, they're fearful of being judged or criticized or just stepping outside of their comfort zone, doing something new. Um, failure, failure is a big one as well. And so we really have to push past that. And when you think of the big picture, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but that definitely goes into my journey and why I wrote the book from stage fright to superstar. Mm, yes, I want to get into that. Now, 
I'm getting ready to fly today on a plane. That's why I'm dressed down because I dress warm when I go on planes and very comfortable. And I'm getting ready to fly to California for a conference that I'm going to be speaking at over the next couple of days. And I used to be very nervous and, you know, and and it would take me hours or days to prep and exactly what I wanted to say. And what I found after working with a, a public speaking coach is that you gain an, a self-confidence of knowing the words that you're already going to say. And there's a lot of rinsing and repeating that happens with that. So it's more of what am I going to wear uh, what do I pack in my suitcase instead of what am I going to say on stage because I'm so nervous I'm going to screw it up? It's a familiar, it's a familiar speech. It's a familiar thing I say, and whether it's 45 minutes or 15 minutes, you can change that up the way you need to once you get confident. But it, it's really about getting confident with the material. So in your book. From Stage Fright to Superstar. And I love that book, by the way. And I don't have it, but I am going to get that book. Uh, I suggest all of you get that book as well. We'll have the link in our podcast notes. From Stage Fright to Superstar, what do you address first? Is it the fear and the judgment and um, why people tend to think that they don't have a message? What, what is the number one? Like, What do you address first that is able to get them to a place where they can accept that they even want to be a superstar on stage or that they'll even walk on that platform or stand behind a mic? Well, actually, thank you so much for that, Colleen. But actually, throughout the book, I, I first start with my journey of when I had stage fright. And I'll go into that more detail. But it was a must for me. I had to learn and master the art of communication. But I had this thing called fear that was stopping me. So we go over fear first. And then I talk about certain things that you can do to like overcome that fear, how you can take baby steps and, and small steps to practice and you've done the works. And so that's why you are such a great speaker yourself because you did the work prior yeah. to get your message out there. And so I talk about, you know, practicing and understanding who you are, who you serve, how you serve them. And Soon that's going to lead to you speaking directly from your heart because you're going to know the word, you're going to know the message, you're going to know, you know your topic. But when you're in front of that audience, the focus transforms from yourself onto them because even if you help one person and the audience transform that life, you've done your job as a speaker. It could be in front of a group, it could be at work, it could be in front of you know stages. I, Anyway, we're always public speaking. So this is a very important skill that everyone must learn if they want to advance in their careers or, you know, in business. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Okay, let's go back um, to your story because today you're a celebrity uh, in my book, you know, with who follows you, where you show up, you have, uh, so, what did you say, 27 or how many speaking gigs did you do last year oh, in 2023? Three. Yes. Yeah. So, and you've already got how many scheduled for this year? Oh, about 27 so far. This year. <laughs> yeah. So I would say Christy had some experience. She's definitely worth listening to right now. So yeah. tell us your, your stage fright story. What happened? Where yeah. were you? Draw this out. Paint us a picture. All right. All right. So it started about over 20 years ago. Yes, I was four years old at that time, I got an opportunity to move to Southern, Southern sunny California um, at a major corporation, you know, glass office, overlooked the ocean. I lived on the ocean. It was beautiful and um, got this job where I was a leader. I just came into a position very young, leading teams. And also I was required to speak and meet with uh, leaders of major corporations. Uh, and I had all the things that, you know, we, we think we should have the background, the education, the experience, but there's one thing that I was lacking. I couldn't communicate. I couldn't look anyone in the eye. I couldn't shake anyone's hand. I, I could barely answer a phone call, leave a voice message. It was that bad. And so I knew I had to step out of my comfort zone, those things that I always tell other people to do and learn and master public speaking. So a friend of mine told me about a group called Toastmasters a few years prior. And I looked them up and I said, you know, I need help. Where can I find help? And I thought about that organization, looked online and saw that there was a group that met a couple of blocks for my job. So I said, okay, well, I'll 
and they'll leave work at five o'clock. The meeting starts at seven. So I'll just park on over there, have my dinner and then go right in. What I remember that day distinctly, I got off at five o'clock, I had my lunch, went to the parking lot and I sat there and cried for two hours, screaming, hyperventilating, calling my mother because I was terrified to walk in that door. And if anyone knows me, they know I'm pretty courageous. So I was able to muster enough courage to walk in. But all I could do was sit in the back of the room. And when I called my name to greet myself, all I could say was, how many Chrissy? And, and <laughs> hi. I was terrified. But the um, the environment was so supportive and so loving and so encouraging. I, I kept coming back because I knew how important it was. And fast forward, I started, you know, getting better and better and better. The first time I spoke in front of a a audience, literally, I I died. You know, we have a fear of dying um, (laughs) in front of public speaking um, because public speaking is the number one fear over death. I I think I died, dropped my body. They helped me pick it back up and (laughs) was able to finish my speech. Um, But, you know, afterwards, I felt this exhilaration and a, a sense of accomplishment that, hey, I did it. I did it. Yeah. And I know that if you keep coming back, you'll get better and better and better. And so I did. And then I helped other people. Mm-hmm. And then my mission began to be um, that I didn't want anyone's life, business or career ever to be stuck or stagnant because they lost or didn't have this valuable skill. Yeah. And I love that. Better. You know, <clears throat> I saw a, um, this was a long time ago. Um, many of us probably know Rachel Hollis. Uh, she wrote the book Girl, Wash Your Face, several other books. Um, her husband, her late husband, Dave Hollis. Um, and she had said, and if you go way back in the very beginning when she first started her events, she had a bunch of note cards in front of her. When she would speak on stage, you know, many of us probably started with note cards just so we could keep our place. I remember in corporate America, I always had note cards and I would stand up in front of the, you know, in front of the audience when I was teaching and training and and I would have note cards just to keep my place. Um, I don't have them anymore. um, But when I but when she did, she said she accidentally dropped them and they went all over the stage, everyone's biggest fear. She said they were out of order. She picked them up. She couldn't remember now where she was. <laughs> everyone's biggest fear, right? Like my note cards are my pacifier. They're my safety blanket right now. They're my everything. And then I drop them and oh my gosh, now I don't know what to say. Why not having that crutch going on stage is so important. Christy, how do you prepare or how would you say our listeners should take a step to preparing to being in front of an audience. So let's not talk about a stage, but having a mic or standing up in front of a room of even five to, you know, 25 people, what should be kind of the first steps that they should utilize for preparation? Well, with my clients, I always tell them to start small, all right? Start in front of your family members, your families first, and then small, find these small groups, you know, little meetup groups or I don't know, Rotary Club, the YMCA, your your gym club. I don't know, stand in front of the or your uh, kids, like line your children up on the couch and their friends. Uh, yes, I like <laughs> uh, pillows in front of my living room, and I would put a sheet of paper and I draw a happy face, and I would tape them to the pillows because I lived by myself at that time. And I visualized that was my audience and that helped me. And then I was practicing once a week in front of an actual group. Um, So start small. You're not going to just start speaking on these large stages immediately, but start somewhere and practicing is going to really help. So start small. I think practicing and having an audience is probably the two most stellar uh, pieces of advice that you could ever give to someone. Practice. So I do workshops and I always carve out the amount of time that I have for a workshop on my schedule that week before the workshop. And so if my workshop's two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever it is, I carve that amount of time out. I get my notes all printed out and I stand up and I walk around my office out loud doing the workshop. And so if I say, okay, now we're going to take time, turn to your partner, I time it 
for five minutes and I time five minutes for them to do their exercise. And then, um, you know, I'm kind of going through my head visually, what is that exercise going to look like? And then after the five minutes, I say out loud, okay, time's up. I blow a whistle or whatever it is that I'm using. I actually visually and, and physically and verbally walk through the entire workshop. What does that do for me? It prepares me in confidence to know you just did the whole workshop. So you can go do this workshop in front of other people. If you forget something, it was meant to be forgotten. Trust me, because you can't control a room full of people. There are going to be people that ask a question, that speak out, that kind of squirrel, that go, and you can say, let's put that in the parking lot for now. We'll get to it later. Great question. I'm going to cover that a little bit later today, whatever that might be. But when you practice, like you said, and you're prepared, even though I have nobody in my office, I'm saying it out loud. And I find a lot of individuals when they practice, they just do it in their head. I read it. They read it and they read it. It's so different than actually physically speaking it out loud, Christy. What is your advice on that for the prep time and you know, gaining your confidence through practice? Well, that's amazing. I love what you said. Colleen, practice, 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 but practice it as if you are speaking in front of a group of people. What you're doing is you're not rehearsing, right? But you're getting familiar with the information so that when different situations come at you, you can easily pivot, easily pivot, easily pivot. And it's very smooth a transition to where you're not just, you know, oh, stuck. Oh, I lost my place. Oh, that's where the fear comes in. It's lack of preparation. And so that's definitely something I do as well. And it's about, you know, wanting to do the best for your audience. You know, wanting to, whether it's a group, it could be virtual in person, I want to do my absolute best. So I'm going to carve out one week, me, two weeks, depending on the presentation, to prepare every single day and, and set a time slot for that presentation so that when it's showtime, right, I'm ready. And I'm not worried about, oh, am I going to, you know, am I, am I engaging enough? Or are they getting it? Or am I forgetting that? I'm focused on the information and the value add that I can give to the people on the other end. Yeah, I love that. And for goodness sakes, be yourself and bring your personality to what you're doing, right? Don't you think, Christy, or maybe I should ask all of the listeners right now, when who have you ever listened to speak, whether it be in person, over a podcast, um, it, you know, you 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 were at a conference and they emotionally touched you like they told a story or they emotionally you had a reaction and a feeling and you were very engaged with what they had to say. And then on the other hand of that, who have you listened to where it was so um, dialed in for like kind of robotic that you just tuned out and you weren't really connected with them? That is, to me, the difference between a dynamic speaker and someone who's just memorized their stuff. Right. And, and understand that in the beginning, you, you're, you're, you're figuring this out. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be like dynamic to start off with, but you're, you're finding out who you are, your true essence, what st helps you stand apart from everyone else. And for me, I try to you know, be more professional and, and, and reserved. That's not me. No. <laughs> I'm not all that and I came out, I'm sorry, I'm dynamic. I have a lot of energy when I'm on stage. When you don't see me off stage, I'm really quiet, reserved. But when I'm on stage, I bring it because I want to help so many people. And I'm just out there. That's just me. Authentically, I can't. And, and I do a better job being me and being confident in being me than trying to be someone else. Well, you know, the saying goes, be you because everybody else is taken. I mean, I've been saying that now for <laughs> 20 years. The whole time in corporate America, I just reminded myself, be you. Everybody else is taken. So what does that look like to be me? That could be a big question for somebody today listening, Christy. What is it like to be me? I don't know because I've pretended to be somebody else for so long. Maybe I'm afraid to be me because what if people don't like me? Right. There are over uh, the 8 billion people in this world. Trust me, all you need is a handful of them who are connected to you and your message. 
And it, it, like I said, it took me a very long time. And now I do a lot of research and I study. I study a lot of speakers and their techniques and how they do certain things. So I'm always learning, right? And I'm gathering the information that I can apply and disregarding the things I can't, of course, but pulling information from various speakers who are amazing, but I'm still being authentic to myself. How do you find out or how do you find out what's really you? You're going to feel it. I joined a challenge when I was learning this virtual speaking. I wanted, really wanted to learn it. So I joined a challenge, a video challenge, where I posted and record or live or recorded and posted over 400 videos in three months. I wanted to learn and master this thing called social media and these videos. And so I, I learned. But what I found out during that time was soon there was a little shift and there was a shift. And there's a little more shift and more. And then that was like, that's it. And that's what I do with my clients as well. You know, as we work and we're practicing, Mm -hmm. so their true essence will come out. And I I think that's a gift that I have that I can see that. And I'm like, that's it. That's what I want more of. That's you. And and when they they understand that that point or that, that position that they're in, when their true essence comes out, they're like, whoa, you're right. And then they go and soar. Yeah. Then you just see this beam come out of there like, oh, my gosh, they're so happy. Let me just say it doesn't matter what other people think about you because it's usually their own opinion of some reflection of themselves that they're reflecting back on you. It has nothing to do with you. And many people struggle to believe that, but it's really the truth. They're not judging you. Somewhere along the way, the judgment comes from their lack of something. And that's why they're placing that on you because it's easier to place it on you than to put that label back on themselves. So they would rather just label you or, and and trust me, it's none of your business. So just think how amazing would your life feel just doing what Christy just said. She shifted and she shifted and she's just tiny little pieces over all of those videos. And she finally was like, that's it. This is me. This is authentically who I am, how I speak, how I show up. Christy, how does it feel to know every day you just show up as Christy Love authentically, just free? You know, it's taken a lot of stress off of me, uh, trying to be perfect and trying to be perfectionist. You know, we talk about that in our group a lot, Colleen, about being a perfectionist and letting that all go Mm -hmm. and understanding that, hey, I put in 110% effort in my preparation and practice, uh, in the research that I have done to add as much value as I can for this audience. And as much as I want 100% acceptance, someone could just not like people in red shirts today. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah. I don't, I don't ever apologize. I wear what I want to wear when I want to wear it and do things how I want to do it. It's not egotistical. It's not ever mean toward anybody else, but I do things the way I want to do things because that's how I live my life on my terms. And every single one of you can do that, whether you work for somebody else, whether you're in a job in corporate America, whether you're a college student, whether you're a son or daughter, Um, in a house where you're still being raised and you're not free to live on your own yet, or whether you're an entrepreneur, you still get to live life on your terms. And that has everything to do with how you act, how you feel about yourself, your confidence level, how you treat others, like what are the values that people would use to explain who you are as a person, that character of you to the essence of the core. And I think we've discovered who truly Christy Love is today on our podcast, Take the Leap, because she said, you know, it's just who I am. It's just me. It's it, I wear what I want to wear. I say what I want to say. I show up how I want to show up because I'm here to make an impact. And she's on a mission and is not letting anyone throw her mission off. So you've gotten really popular on social media. Do you want to share how people can find you on social media so they can follow you? Because you've got what? Steve Harvey following you. His family's following you. Is Oprah following you? Should I? Am I going to find you on Oprah's couch for one of her Sunday, you know, talks soon or what? It was funny. Actually, two days ago from today, you know, I was at an event and I was walking by and 
this lady grabbed my hand and she, you know, she was just so delicate. She's like, oh my gosh, I know you. And I saw her down the hallways prior and I'm like, that's Steve Harvey's daughter. You know, I know that. Her bad outfit. Oh my gosh. Uh, and I'm like, hmm, you know, I mean, is this, uh, maybe I got her mixed up. I'm like, Steve Harvey. Yeah, this is Steve Harvey. And she's like, no, I know you. I, I've seen you everywhere. You're everywhere. And I'm like, Okay, I know you too. It was, it was, I'm like, okay, now what's what's your name? Because I'm like, okay, maybe she's a dope and hanger or something. Yeah. <laughs> and we were she said Carly. And I'm like, that was his Harry's daughter. Oh my yeah. God. So I must be doing something right. You had a moment. And yeah, how fun moment. is you had a moment and how fun is that, that you follow her, you know exactly what she looks like, you know, you've seen her everywhere online and she's following you and sees you everywhere online. So I guess the key to this is you have to stand out. You said, be yourself, be interesting, stand out and know what your unique quality is that makes you different. If you didn't have a unique quality, Christy, Carly never would have even had an interest in following you. If you blended in like all the rest, there'd be nothing for her to really have an interest to follow. Right. You know, I watch the football games um, and, and this is being aired much later than when I watch the football games uh, for the finals for the um, Super Bowl. And, you know, it's so interesting to me how many times they show Taylor Swift when, you know, Travis Kelsey is on the it's like um, he's a superstar himself in football. Yet, you know, they tend to to show her a lot. But why Taylor Swift stands out and why she became the person she is, is so unique in the writing, her style, the way she does things. If you look at every other star out there, she's so different than them, right? I could, we could go through every singer, every actor, every actress. They stand out and they're different. I was telling my husband, I don't see any great comedy movies coming out lately. And I have some of my favorites, but back in the day, Vince Vaughn was just hilarious because he would go off script all the time. He was very, you know, uh, quick and punchy and to the point, you know, and funny. And it's like, where are all the good comedians anymore? You know, Kevin Hart's another one of my favorites. You know, he's in a lot of movies and is a comedian. I don't think he could not be funny. It's natural for him, right? So if you're not naturally funny, don't try to be funny. If you're not naturally snarky, don't try to be snarky. That's trying to be somebody you're not, right, Christy? So developing. So first, let's start with this. Buy the book from Stage Fright to Superstar. Kind of get a background of Christy, a little bit more of her principles and ideas. And then I know you have a checklist. Um, and and then again, uh, repeat any of your social media that you have out there. We're, we're going to have some links below for them to click on. But where can they follow you on? Are you on Instagram? Is that your biggest one? LinkedIn, Facebook? LinkedIn and Facebook are my biggest ones. You can find me at Christy Love. So just type in Christy Love. You'll see me in my studio background here. Uh, yes. And I have a free uh, public speaking five-step framework checklist. And I think Colleen's going to put that in a chat there. Yeah, the It's there part. for them. Yeah. They oh, could click uh, on it right now. Yeah, of I had two seconds to talk about Taylor, Taylor Swift. Yeah. We were talking about practicing and consistency is so important. But, you know, I read that she sings her entire performance while she's on the treadmill. Her entire six hour performance while she's on the treadmill. Oh, wow. That's, that's the type of preparation that we're yeah. talking about. It's going to make you really stand above the rest and work in excellence to give the best impact to your audience. Yeah. How many times have y'all done that? Because when I travel, I usually go to the gym. Now, this time I'm staying at a friend's house. So I actually packed my bands and some things that I need. But how many of you have walked a treadmill or just gone out to walk and just kind of read over notes to where it becomes memory for your mind? So you know how to begin what the middle is and how to end. I feel like you can fill a lot of the, those other things in, but you've got to know where to start, what your middle is and how to end. And please, for the love of everything out there, land the plane. When I say land the plane and you're on stage, end it, have an ending, have a closure, have a, a whatever it is that wraps it up. Don't say, oh, we're out of time. I got to hurry up and get through these slides. no. Please, for the love of Pete, have a 
and, and, and ending and laying the plane. I love it when it takes off perfect and you've got everyone engaged and then it just never lands. So it drives me crazy. Please land the plane. Please give everyone a reason or know how, uh, you know, kind of wrapping up what you said and how they reach you afterwards. That's what we do on this podcast. We land the plane. I'm telling you, buy the book from Christy. She's telling you where you can find her on social media. We have all the links here. You now have a free download of the five steps for the framework. So download that too. Every single one of us has a duty to share a message because they can only hear it from you. How many times has someone next to you said, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that. That makes so much sense. I'm going to apply that to my life. And you look at your friend and you're like, girl, I have said that to you for five years straight. And she goes, what? Nah. I, you're like, what? I have been telling you that. And she never heard it because she had to hear it from that individual. So we have a duty to share our messages. I really do feel. And so, you know, you've got someone like Christy here who has a TV show, who is a podcast host. Do you need more visibility? Do you want to be on some of these platforms? Reach out to Christy and let her know you heard her on Take the Leap and you want to be on her platforms. Christy, one last thing. Um, I want to ask you, what book are you reading now? And what one last message would you like to share with our our audience? <laughs> I am actually reading all about intermittent fasting because I want to have the best vitality and energy yes. on stage. And, you know, it's all about practicing. And I'm also taking voice lessons from a singer who was on The Lion King. Um, so it's always practicing. So I'm learning both of those at one time, being in tip-top health and also making sure that my voice can withstand an eight-hour mm. workshop or, you know, four-hour workshop or maybe a whole week workshop and not lose my voice. I love that. That's beautiful. Remember, you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that's ever going to be. So how you choose to show up and move from stage fright to superstar is all going to be up to you. So Christy, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you all for being loyal listeners. Um, and of course, engaging with all of our speakers. They bring so much value to you week after week. Until next time, remember, be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today.